Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Ask Coffee at School of Culinary Arts. My name is Chef Caesar, and today I want to prepare for you guys uh, some shrimp tacos. I like to make this breaded so they're really nice and crispy. Of course, you can always do them a different way with a batter or even saute. Uh, I'm going to be making an avocado uh, cilantro crema to go with that. But I also made this uh, jicama slaw. I, li I like to make this beforehand so it kind of has a little time to kind of marinate. So what I got here is some uh, julienne jicama, some uh, bell peppers, some um, carrots, uh, red cabbage, a little cilantro, and I did a little uh, uh, dressing with some of uh, uh, rice wine vinegar, a little lemon juice, and sugar. That's it. And a little cilantro as well. And then you want to let it kind of marinate a little bit. You want to have a little bit of crunch in this because these vegetables are nice and crunchy. As you can see, it also adds a lot of color to your, uh, to your tacos. So I want to kind of uh, put it to the side. I'm also going to put up the recipe as well. Now the next thing we're going to do, we're going to make our avocado crema. I like to use some nice and ripe avocados here, fresh is the best. I know sometimes you got to get the frozen stuff, but again, if that's what you got to do, it's fine. Uh, I'm going to be doing uh, a little bit spicy. I want to put a little jalapeno peppers in there. If you don't want that uh, to be a little spicy, you can still use jalapenos. You can just remove the seeds, right? So I like to give a little kick to mine. So I'm going to chop maybe just you know, uh, a quarter of one. This is pretty big. Uh, and if you don't want it to be spicy, again, you remove the seeds. Uh, but otherwise, it adds a lot of, a lot of flavor to your, uh, uh, to your uh, crema here. Okay, so I'm going to chop them up a little bit. Okay, I'm going to throw all this in my uh, food processor here. If you don't have one of this, a blender would also do the job. Okay, now next, we're going to cut up some avocados. Uh, make sure you get them nice and soft. Not too, too ripe, but nice and soft. And you're going to feel them when you, when you get them. You don't want you don't want them to be too mushy when you cut them open. See, so I'm using two of them. If you want to do a little less, that's okay. Okay, be careful. You want to remove the pit. Okay, little twist. Okay. 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 Now we're gonna use uh, we're gonna puree this a little bit. Okay, that way you get them a little bit. We're going here. Sometimes they stick to the sides of the your bowl here. You're going to push them down. Once we add avocado, <coughs> a little spicy there. It makes me sneeze. Okay, now we're going to scoop this avocado flesh into there. <coughs> you can see it's nice and soft. I'm going to put up the recipe uh, with a video once I, you know, uh, have it all this done. It's going to be up there for you guys. Okay. Now I'm going to, you know, I uh, add a little bit of a, uh, just a squeeze of lime juice. I would say like a half a lime, about one uh, tablespoon. Okay. Okay. Shove some cilantro <coughs> in there, a couple sprigs. It's going to be a really good salsa there. Nice crema. Drop some there. We also want to add a little bit of salt there. Okay, okay now we're going to puree this little mixture we got going here should be nice and smooth
gotta do it a couple times here to kind of push it down. And then we're gonna be adding some sour cream at the end to make it really smooth. Now we got about a three quarter cup of sour cream. We're gonna finish it off now. We're almost done here. Now before we take it out here, we gotta try this, make sure this has enough salt, otherwise we need to add one more. This one's right on. I made this a few times, so I kinda get an idea how much to put in there. So now we're gonna put this in a little bowl here. See that? This is the texture you want. If you want a little bit more runny, that's okay. You can add a little milk in there, but this should be this should be good enough. Okay. Otherwise, it becomes a little bit too runny. You don't want that. Okay. All right. There you go. Now we got the primer ready. Our next step is gonna be to. Uh, bread or shrimp right we need to get our shrimp ready because we're going to be frying those so uh, i'm using some uh, 1620 shrimp what that means when you go buy shrimp you probably see in the package like a number right uh 10 16 16 20 what that means how many shrimp are to a pound right so uh the small the more shrimp are in there the less the smaller they are the smaller number the bigger they are so we're going to do a standard breading procedure which we're going to be doing some egg wash okay we got some uh, just all-purpose flour here right and then we have some uh, panko breadcrumbs i like to use panko because it gives uh, a really nice uh, crispy uh, texture then i'm gonna remove this out of the way go okay so uh we got here you want to set it like this right you want to start with your product first uh then it's going to go into the flour the egg wash and then lastly the panko uh, so this is a uh, proper uh, bread and standard procedure. Another thing you want to do, you want to season your flour a little bit, right? You don't want to just put plain flour. Also, uh, your panko as well. If you want to do something different, like maybe some Cajun uh, spices here, you can. Uh, but you definitely need to add some flavor here. Okay. And you also want to do your shrimp here. A little salt and pepper. There you go. And uh, it's very important that you remove the, the tails, the shells, right? You don't want to bite into a taco that has the shells in it. Uh, that would not be fun, right? So if you were using the shrimp, uh, maybe like just uh, do a fried shrimp, then you want to leave the tails on for presentation. But right now, we want to take them off. So you want to mix all this uh, salt and pepper here. Same thing with the panko, right? So it's also important to remember, you wanna keep one hand wet, one dry. Otherwise, you're gonna make a mess with your flour. So you're gonna just put the shrimps in the, in the flour here, or if you're doing chicken, whatever, you're gonna just kinda let lightly toss them in there. You wanna shake the excess flour, right? And then, in the meantime, I'm gonna start my oil here, okay? Uh, it's very important that you, uh, Get up the oil here to a 350, right? I have a uh, thermometer here that I, that I have. Uh, it's a candy thermometer. You want to definitely get 350 before you start frying, right? So, and again, you can uh, do the shrimp, get them ready, bread it, and then kind of put them away in the refrigerator. But you can do this all at the same time if you want. So, you do this, do a few, okay, do that. 
getting one hand wet, one hand dry, right? Okay. 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 So we're gonna pump them in there, right? to the panko make sure you kind of press them down a little bit here so the breadcrumbs kind of stick to them right okay. there you go you can do a few at a time maybe should have got a little bigger this kind of small here but again I don't have a lot of room to work so this is gonna be fine okay once you see this lightly coated really nice with the breadcrumbs you're going to put them in a little dish. Okay. And again, you can do this ahead of time. You can, uh, you know, bread them ahead of time. Uh, if it will freeze them, or put them in your refrigerator, and then you are frying them whenever you're ready, right? Okay. Okay. I'm going to take some more here. And this is uh, really, really quick. So these are kind of big. I mean, I you can get them even smaller. Uh, they're like a little bit big for tacos, but you know what? I, I like them. You can also butterfly the shrimp as well. So you press them down a little bit so your breadcrumbs stick to the the shrimp okay okay i'm keeping an eye on my oil here you're gonna see that when the oil starts to heat up the viscosity of the oil is not gonna be as thick when the oil is cold it's a little bit like you know uh, it looks like a syrup but once it starts to heat up it becomes more like water liquid right so that's a sign that the oil is getting hot I know sometimes at home we might not have a thermometer like that to you know uh, read the temperature so you can also do it by eye just you know kind of heat it up and then you just fry one shrimp at a time and when it starts to get you know uh, bubbling and golden brown you also don't want to get the oil too hot because what happens when the oil is too hot uh, the outside is going to brown very fast and the inside is going to be raw so it's, it's very important to remember that another thing too you don't need a lot of oil. As you can see, I got like, I don't know, two, two and a half inches. Uh, you don't need to fill it up with it all the way to the top because it's very dangerous. If you put in the product in there, uh, the oil level is going to rise, and you don't want it to go over and uh, start a fire in your kitchen. So that's something uh, to also keep in mind, too. Remember. Okay, so we got our shrimp kind of ready here, right? Now I'm going to move this out of the way. counter here so we're going to start in our frying our shrimp here it's very important that we clean as we go right it's much easier to clean as we go than to make a big mess and then at the end have to clean everything up right so our shrimp are kind of you know breaded ready to go now we got to wait for our oil to come to temperature right so there as you can see i'm going to turn the heat here a little higher and it's getting there, it's saying oh, almost 200 degrees, so uh, it's going to you know, start to heat up. And you can see, I don't know if you can see in the camera, the oil starts to get like uh, a little thinner. Because when you put it in there, it's cold, the viscosity is much thicker. So now it starts to get a little uh, you know, thinner. And as you can see, this uh, avocado crema is ready to go. My uh, pick on my slow is also ready, so we're going to start to put some tacos together real quick. Another thing to remember, when you find the shrimp, when you take them out of the, out of the oil, uh, you don't want to put them in paper towels or like in a plate. Put them in a the rack because otherwise, see, uh, they're going to start to get soggy, right? The steam from the shrimp are going to get, you know, the breadcrumbs soggy. And uh, this is how frying works. A lot of people uh, don't understand the science uh, because the oil is at 350, right? That's what you want to have for frying. You don't want to go higher than that because, you know, it starts to burn the product. And, you know, as we know, Everything that we fry has, you know, vegetables, uh, proteins, have moisture. So, uh, and you know, the the water boils at 212 degrees, right? After that, you know, one degree higher, it goes into steam. So when you put in the shrimp in there, uh, 350 degree oil, 
what's happening? They start to steam with thi within, right? They start to cook within, uh, from the inside out, right? They start to steam. That's why uh, it's so important that the oil is too hot. The outside is going to brown very fast. And you might think, oh, this is done. But when you go to cut it open, it's going to be raw, right? And you don't want it. You want the, the product to cook all the way through. So uh, it's a 280. It's almost there. So once it hits, you know, 350, we can start frying the shrimp. That way, you know, it stays nice and golden brown. I got a little dish to take them out here. And I, again, uh, one of the things, if you don't have a thermometer like this, this is a candy thermometer. You can, you know, check the oil, test it. Just put some breadcrumbs in there, uh, and you're going to see that it starts to bubble uh, and get brown right away. You're going to get an idea that the oil is ready to, to be used, but uh, a lot of times, you know, you don't have this. So uh, just if you can afford to buy one of these thermometers, you know, get it. We don't have this problem. When you work in the restaurant industry, we have fryers, right? They have like, you know, thermostats that you set the temperature to uh, 350, and it's going to stay there. If you put product in there, the oil is going to drop, so the fryer is going to kick on automatically. So you don't have to worry about this kind of uh, thing when you're working in the in industry. But at home, we kind of have to, right? So my oil is almost there, uh, 340 right now. So and you can see it's kind of, you know, growing in there. So I'm going to start putting some of the shrimp in there. Another thing you want to do also, if you're doing like a batter, try not to drop the product all the way down there. Because otherwise, if you keep dropping product, it's going to stick to each other, right? Especially like shrimp. If we were doing a batter, you want to kind of dip them in there and kind of wiggle back and forth. It's called a Japanese drop. So uh, this is something you would do. You kind of drop them in there and kind of move back and forth. Be careful not to burn your hands. And then after a few seconds, you let them go, right? But when you're doing breading, you don't have to do that, right? You kind of just put them in there. Again, you don't want to overcrowd your pan, otherwise the oil level is going to rise. You can see it goes up, and we don't want to uh, to go over, right? So you can drop a few in there, and you will see that once you start dropping product in there, that uh, the temperature is going is going to come down. So I'm also going to turn this down too, because uh, this is pretty hot, right? So I'm going to put the rest of my shrimp in there. Okay. It's a little bit harder to control the temperature in one of these induction uh, burners, right? So it's something that you got to be careful. I can remove my thermometer right now. Okay. Put it aside. Because you kind of got an idea what the oil is like. And you're going to see that it's going to start to turn nice and golden brown. See that? Nice and crispy. And you only need, uh, need to fry them a few minutes. You don't need to cook them for too long because they're small and they, they cook very quick. So remember that. You're going to see when you get like a nice like golden brown. We uh, have this, uh, you know, GBD, which means golden brown delicious for uh, sure uh, in the industry. So you're going to learn a lot of terms when you're working in a professional kitchen. Uh, we use, you know, a lot of terms to communicate in the kitchen. And it's always fun to, to learn that. So we're going to put them in this rack right here. See? Kinda, you can see the ones that we put in first. They got brown a little quicker. And for example, if you are like, you're going to see this oil is pretty clean, right? So if you are at home, you don't want to throw it away. I mean, you can use this again. Uh, one thing you want to do, you want to wait to cool it down, right? And then you can take a, you know, a coffee filter or a cheesecloth and filter all this little uh, uh, piece of breadcrumbs in the bottom, right? And you can use it again. So something we do uh, you know, on a regular basis daily in the restaurant business. Uh, we need to clean the fryers, fil filter them out. So, uh, one, you kind of extend the shelf life of the oil. You're not spending too much, uh, you know, money on that. And also, your product's going to be much better, right? And one of the things you want to remember is to, uh, you know, don't get the oil too high, too hot. That uh, kills the oil. Also, you don't want to put any salt in here. Like, for example, if you're going to season the shrimp, you're going to do it. Uh, over here, once we got them out of the, uh, the oil, you can sprinkle us a little salt and pepper, right? There you go. 
And uh, that's why when you go to McDonald's, you probably, you know, taking your kids, you see these people, you know, cooking the French fries. And they come out, they put them in this, uh, like, stainless steel bin, and they season the fries there. They don't put over the oil because salt is going to destroy your oil much quicker. Now we're going to move this to the side. We're going to heat up some tortillas. We want to put up, uh, make it a plate presentation for our shrimp tacos, right? As you can see, you can make a really good... Uh, uh, if we're at home, right? Not just uh, you know in a restaurant. You can do this yourself. I got some uh, radishes. It's gonna be like a little garnish I'm gonna put on top. All right, julienne in a little bit here. Okay, a little spicy, a little crunchiness too as well. A lot of color too. So I'm gonna heat up some uh, tortillas that I got down here. All right. I got some flour, some corn. I mean, uh, you can do whatever you want. Uh, so, got some yellow corn. I kind of put them in the skillet real quick here, just get them nice and hot. As you can see, my slaw is like nice and crunchy, right? So you can see there's a lot of color in there, a little bit of liquid in the bottom. So this is something you want to do, uh, you know, ahead of time. And this, I love it. It's really, really nice. Uh oh, too hot, too hot, see? Okay, so. That's why I say it's hard to control the heat on these uh, induction burners. off here so now we can set them over here and we can put them, put them together you want to put a little slow on the bottom okay yeah okay. if you want you can also chop the shrimp up but you don't have to okay you can just put them there a couple shrimp in the top okay yeah put some of this cream on there You feel the shrimp really crunchy, so they're really nice. You can also cut some uh, lime here. You can set some of the chicken. Do it, right? Sprinkle a little radishes on top. I like to put a little sprig of cilantro on the top, just like that. And there you go. Some uh, homemade uh, shrimp tacos with an avocado crema, which are very easy to do and very tasty. I'll see you next time. Thank you very much.